Mr. Galbraith, uh, first of all, on the there's the discussion this week about the General Motors bailout. Some of us think that we ought to just let it go down. Others think that it's very urgent that uh, we uh, give the auto industry at least some form of loan. Uh, which side do you take and why? I think you do not want a calamity to happen between now and the inauguration. So that the step of prudence is to make give them a bridge loan leading to a plan for restructuring and, uh, and redevelopment of the industry. Uh, but the problem here is that if one major company goes down, the suppliers go down, the other companies may also go down, uh, and then you have states and localities that go down, and you, the, the whole problem becomes much, much larger uh, much too quickly. So it, it, minimal prudence suggests that you would put some money in now to prevent that from happening. Uh, is there something in this, though, that says that we ought to have a larger industrial policy? Well, ultimately, you're going to have to have an energy policy that deals with both the security and the climate change issues, and that is going to have a very large industrial component, yes. Okay. Um, you also said something that I had not heard uh, before in your lunch today, which uh, in your, your speech today, uh, which uh, speaks to how we address the fact that uh, particularly for senior citizens who've lost somewhere around, uh, they've, they've seen their stock portfolios drop 30 or 40 percent. Uh, what should we do about those? Well, you can't make people whole on their stock market losses, but you can make sure that seniors as a group do not lose purchasing power and that individuals do not fall into poverty. And the way to deal with that is to raise Social Security benefits. It hasn't been done in a generation, and it would, basically going forward, the senior population as a whole is going to be relying more on Social Security and less on the private uh, stock investments, which have lost so much value. That's just a reality, make it or don't. Raising Social Security benefits is a way of helping to secure the future of that part of the population. And how do we pay for that? We, uh, we pay for it. Well, right now, the Social Security Trust Fund is running still an enormous surplus. But the government can raise Social Security benefits as it wishes. It's a transfer payment from, the, from part of the population to, the, to, to another part. But in the immediate situation, you want to make sure that purchasing power of that part of the population is preserved. So, in effect, you're paying for it. How are you paying for it? You're paying for it with the losses that are being incurred on the stock market accounts that have already gone. They're already draining purchasing power from that part of the population. So you're simply holding that population group as a whole uh, to the same standard that it previously had. You've also suggested that we ought to re eliminate the payroll tax for at least a period of time? I think it would be reasonable to think about suspending at least part, maybe even all of the payroll tax, depending upon how serious the, the um, economic situation is as it develops. This would be a really important expansionary policy in the sense it would put income in the hands of working families and it would uh, reduce the cost of employment to employers. So from both points of view, it is the right target. Now you could do it directly by having the federal government pay the payroll tax for people so that the Social Security Trust Fund is kept whole, or you can, off you can run an offset through some other part of the tax structure through the income tax, which is essentially what the Obama campaign proposal was. Uh, for the first five hundred dollars of payroll tax, I'm proposing that you you take that in that basic concept uh, and you scale it up to the stabilization needs of the overall economy. Okay, thank you. Good. Thanks for